Hey everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in tonight uh, for our service here. I, I hope you had a good week. Uh, probably, <laughs> what, what is a good week right now, right? Uh, but hopefully your time with your family has been a blessing. And as, as we go throughout this half hour, 45 minutes, let me just share with you uh, what it's gonna look like. Uh, and, and then I wanna share some scripture with you and we'll get started. Uh, we have a desire for prayer right now. Just as a staff, we talked about this and we said, you know, uh, let's focus on seeking God. We've joined with, as many of you have seen through our announcements with this Unite 714, uh, joining with thousands of other churches to seek God and pray. And so throughout this time together tonight, we're gonna have some prayer time. We're gonna have some worship time. We're gonna take communion together as a church family. And we are gonna come to the cross as we talk about Good Friday. I want to read to you from 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Uh, this is a pretty familiar verse for a lot of people who've been uh, following Jesus for a while. It's a verse that the whole Unite 714 is centered around. It's 2 Chronicles 714, and, and it says this, If my people, this is God talking to King Solomon, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. This is God talking to Solomon, they're, they're dedicating the temple, and he's, he, God is telling Solomon, hey, here's what's gonna happen in the future. When, when things are going well, I'm gonna be blessing you, you're gonna be experiencing this and this. Uh, then he also tells him, however, when things are going bad, and the heavens are closed up and you're not getting any rain and there's plagues that are coming. This is what I need you to do. I need you to humble yourself and seek my face. And that's what this, this time together tonight is about. We're gonna seek God's face. Uh, I'm gonna have Todd lead us in a song and then we're gonna have some different people from our church lead us in prayer. And, and we're gonna seek God's face. Later on, we're gonna have communion together uh, but our desire, our prayer, uh, we know if, if a move of God is going to take place, if a healing in our land is going to take place, it's going to start with prayer. And so I would just encourage you, wherever you're tuning in from, your phone, your TV, a computer, uh, let's take this time together, seek God, pray, and ask for Him to show up in a mighty way in our community, in our lives individually, in our community, and in our nation. Todd, will you lead us in this song, Amazing Grace? for God's amazing grace. We're gonna have a handful of people lead us in prayer now, and I'm asking you uh, where you're at to agree with us 
intercede uh, on behalf of those that you know and on behalf of our church and our community and our people. And, and as you're praying, we're believing that God is using all of our prayers, right? The prayer of a righteous person is quick and powerful. Then we'll come back after those prayers and have communion together. But uh, as we jump into these now, pray with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather together on this Good Friday to remember the crucifixion of your Son, Jesus Christ, may we be humbled by the price that he paid for our sins. And may we strive daily to live lives worthy of the death of your Son. This pandemic this plague, the fear, and the uncertainty that it drives in our hearts. God, you knew this was going to happen. This did not take you by surprise. May we lean on you and allow you to lead us through this trying time. God, just as you did for the children of Israel in Egypt, protect us, your children, from this virus and the harm that the devil intends for it to cause in our lives. May this pandemic, may it, may it drive prayerless believers into radical prayer. May it force them into their Bibles. May they, the word of God be preached from the pulpits of the churches of America and around the world. And may salvation be that message. May your spirit sweep the nation, allowing for us to see radical change to drive us into you. And may we see a great awakening and a revival throughout our churches, allowing for the lost to come back to you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Dear Jesus, I come before you today and I pray for our country as we're facing this pandemic and this crisis. Give our leaders wisdom as they see us through this time. I pray for all the people and the families who are struggling with this sickness right now, that you'd heal them, that you'd heal their bodies, give their doctors wisdom in knowing what to do and how to treat them. Give the people who are researching how to cure this disease wisdom and boldness to try new things and the curiosity to look into new solutions that have never been thought of before. I ask you to also take care of everyone who has lost their jobs during this time, that you give them peace that you would meet their needs, that you would let them see that you are their provider. And for everyone that's dealing with anxiety and with stress and with depression during this time, that you would see them through this, that you would help them with their anxiety and their depression and with all the different emotions that we're struggling with as a country right now as we go through these unprecedented times, that you would give us a peace that passes all understanding I also pray for the church during this time, that you would enable us to be the light in this world, that these times are not a surprise to you, and you have a plan throughout this crisis of how we, the church, can meet the needs of those around us. <clears throat> Give us a boldness to share during this time, that we would be able to share the reason why we have peace during this time. Give us opportunities to love those who normally don't get to hear about your love. And give us wisdom as we navigate through this with what to say and the different avenues that we could use to reach people that maybe we've never had opportunities to reach before. <clears throat> I pray for your peace and your wisdom on just our country and especially again on our leaders as they see us through this time. Thank you for your provision and for seeing us through this in advance. Just in your prayer. Well, Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you've done for us, God. And I just pray right now, God, that you'd move, Lord God, in revival in this city. I pray that you'd revive us, Lord God, that you'd heal our land, Lord God. Lord, help us to humble ourselves in this time, to come after you with everything we have, Jesus, to seek your face, God. Lord, I pray that you would move in hearts, Lord God, this Easter season. Jesus, come and I just pray that you would just Come and, and be in people's living rooms, Lord God, during Easter, that you would reveal yourself and how much you love the people, Lord. Give us your heart, Lord. 
Help us to see what you see, Lord God. We pray for complete healing, Lord God, over, over people who are suffering right now with, with the coronavirus. I ask, Lord God, that you just take this virus away, God. Would you heal our land? Would you heal the people, Lord God, who are dealing with, with coronavirus or any other ailments, Lord God, in their bodies right now, God? I pray at the sound of my voice, God, that anybody who is, who is needing healing right now, Lord God, I just pray for complete healing right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come and move mightily, Lord. We command healing in, in people's bodies right now, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much, Father, for sending Jesus to die for us. And thank you for that acknowledgement every day in our lives and what that can do for us right now during this difficult time. Um, the peace that we can have each day through this, we know this is creating hardships. We know this is creating doubt and uncertainty, but you are in control and you know more than any of us what we need to get through this and we just rely on you. Uh, take away that fear that might want to trickle in. Take away any doubt that might be trickling into our heads and replace it with a sense of comfort, a sense of peace, that you are in control and that you've got this. You have this pandemic, you have this entire COVID-19 in your hands. You know what everybody is going through. You know what we all need. And we rely on you, we give it to you. We're nothing without you. We give this all to you. We ask that you would heal this world, that you would put this to a stop, that you would heal us all together, that we would um, come out of this stronger than we've ever thought we could and um, in the meantime, through whatever it is that you're going to bring us each day or allow us to go through, that you would give us truly that strength and that guidance and that certainty uh, that we need right now more than anything. Thank you so much for everybody out there, medical professionals, um, everybody that is doing a specific part to combat this in, in, in their own way. We love you again. We thank you for those that have recovered and those that are sick right now. We pray that you would heal them, that you would bring a supernatural healing on those loved ones that we may know uh, that are battling this virus right now, that um, you would heal them and get them through this. Again, we know that you have this. We know that we're not alone. We know that you're in control. We give it to you, and we thank you so much for who you are, all that you do in our lives in spite of everything going on. Thank you for that peace. We give it to you. We love you so much, Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, as your children and believers in Jesus, your Son, hear our prayers today. We humbly come before you and ask for your divine intervention and revelation of your word to encompass us in the days ahead. You said you would not leave us or forsake us. You would supply our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We pray, Father, and ask for your protection. As stated in Psalm 91, Lord, be our protector. Deliver us from the snare of the fowler under your wings we take refuge. We shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Shall no evil befall us, nor plague come nigh our dwelling. We pray for our country. Father, as it says in Second Chronicles 7, 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, Oh Lord, help us to be humble before you. And we are to pray and seek your face and turn from wickedness. Then we will hear from heaven and you will forgive our sin and heal our land. Lord, heal our land economically, physical healing in our people. Turn our nation to you and your divine ways, and for us to accept Jesus as Lord. 
Bring in the harvest of souls, Lord. Let no fear come upon your flocks. Philippians says we are to be anxious for nothing. But let us be a witness of your peace and place boldness upon our lips <clears throat> of your mercy, of your grace, of your goodness and salvation that draw not, draws nigh. May our families be saved and know heaven is their future home. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, doorposts, our families. You shed that precious blood at the cross, Lord, for our healing and protection. We accept it and thank you, Lord, for your resurrection from the dead that we may have life abundantly. As our acknowledgement of your death and resurrection at this time of Easter, we thank you. You give us hope and all the blessings of being your children and a royal priesthood. May we abound in your goodness from this day forward to proclaim your word and stand firm as your sheep who hear your voice. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh, thank you for those prayers. And uh, we're going to transition now. Uh, we're going to sing a song and, and then have communion. If you don't have uh, your communion elements with you, uh, maybe this week you're able to stop by and grab them. You can get those ready now. Uh, if you don't have, I would encourage you to find any bread that you would have. Uh, really in this moment, any beverage. Uh, and I know we're used to, to having colored juice uh, because of what it represents. Uh, but if you don't have something like that, that's not our concern, right? Our concern is that uh, is what they represent and what the, the meaning behind this moment. And so I would encourage you to take this time right now to get those elements and, and have somebody, maybe a dad or a grandpa or whoever, the mom, leader of this house, hand them out to the the family members and prepare yourself as we sing this song, Living Hope, the song, the story of Jesus and what he did for us. Todd, will you lead us in this song? Bye. 
that song, How Great the Chasm. This is the, the, the power of the cross. That there is this massive chasm because of sin in the world and our life. As scripture talks about the wages of sin is death. All have sinned and fallen short. This chasm between you and me and God and the cross bridge that chasm. As we get ready to take communion today, uh, I want to read uh, the, the story of the crucifixion. And we call it Good Friday. The, the day in and of itself isn't good. The, the Savior, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Chosen One, the Anointed One was crucified. Uh, we know why it's good because of the work that it did. Uh, but one of the things, Scripture talks about different things that we should do when we take communion. We should remember Jesus' death. We should evaluate, examine our heart and our relationship with God. We should enjoy the fellowship of of our, ourselves and believers, and then we look forward to Jesus' return. And right now, I want to remember Jesus' death. And so I'm going to read to you from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, this is his re record of the crucifixion, and then we're going to take communion together. Uh, this is in the book of Mark, chapter 15. It says, The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, and they called together the whole company of the soldiers. They put a purple robe on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and they set it on him. And they began to call out, Hail, King of the Jews! And again and again they struck him. They struck him on the head and they spit on him. Falling to on their knees, they, they, they paid homage to him. They, they were mocking him. And then they were done. They took off the purple robe, they put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They were passing by on his way from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. And they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And it was there that they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what they would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. In a written notice of the charge read this, King of the Jews. I'm so thankful that he wasn't just the King of the Jews. He was King of the world. And it's in this moment right now that we remember the crucifixion and what Jesus was willing to go through because of his great love for you, uh, because of his great love for, for me. And so if you have any communion elements with you, I'd love for you to grab them. Uh, if you were able to stop by and get this from the church, uh, you can peel off the little plastic on top. It'll open up uh, the wafer. This represents the body of Jesus that was broken for you and for me. I'm so thankful for his love for us. The Bible says that we should do this in remembrance of him. So if you've got a bread with you, if you have a wafer with you, let's take this together. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing we're supposed to do when it comes to communion is to examine our relationship with God. The blood of Jesus overcomes all sin. It overcomes all sickness, it overcomes all disease. And this is a perfect time to evaluate, to examine your relationship with God, our relationship with God, and say, Lord, if there's anything that is in me right now that's unholy, that would, that would hinder my relationship with God, I confess that in this moment. And I would plead the blood of Jesus over my life right now. Father, we thank you for the blood God, we thank you that you were willing to, to sacrifice your life, to go through the pain and the, the distress and the turmoil and the anguish that, that you went through to bring us salvation. We can never, we can never uh, pay you back fully, but in this moment we confess our sin and we, we give you, we commit our life to you, Jesus. Let's take the cup together.
Thank you, Jesus. Another thing we're supposed to do, as I mentioned earlier, is to look forward to Jesus' return. This is what makes Good Friday good because we know the end of the story. We're gonna go back and finish this song because I love how it ends. We're focusing on the return of Christ and that he has gained the victory over death. And we can celebrate that as we remember his death, we can still celebrate the fact that he conquered death. Ta, will you lead us in? Then came the morning that sealed the Jesus. Your body buried began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. different people from our church. I'm asking you to pray fervently in these next few moments. Pray on behalf of those that are sick. Pray on behalf of those that are lost. Pray over the Easter weekend for the church as a whole globally to reach lost. Pray for your families and pray for our nation and its leaders. Let's seek God together. I was really encouraged this week when I was reading in the book of Luke in our reading plan that we've been doing together as a church. And um, in chapter 11, Jesus is talking about a story to his disciples, asking them if they had a friend who came and knocked on their door in the middle of the night and said, hey, I need some food. I have some guests and I have nothing to give them. Um, do you have anything I can give them? And he talked about in the story about how the person may be like, go away, it's late, I don't want to wake anybody up. But this friend was so persistent in asking for some food that the guy eventually gets up and gets him his food. And then that's when he continues with the verse that many of us are familiar with, where it says, um, I tell you, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. And as I was reading that, it really made me think about how persistent am I when I'm praying and asking God for things? Am I as persistent as I think I am or maybe I'm not? And oftentimes when I do pray, whether persistent or not, I like to use scripture when I pray because I believe that there's power in using scripture. And oftentimes I'll even like write down the scripture. And so I'm excited that I could be with you today doing this. And so as I pray, I'm going to be throwing out a few scriptures there. And would you join me as I pray these scriptures over us and our church and our city? God, I thank you so very much that even in the midst of a time that could be very lonely and could be very isolating, we have technology and we're able to stay connected with one another. And while it's not perfect or ideal, um, it's something that at least right now in this season we can use, we can utilize to at least feel somewhat close to people. And I just pray, God, that you would continue to remind us that you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And God, that fear would not control our decision-making. Fear would not um, consume us, but God, that we would continue moving forward, knowing that you have given us the power that we need to persevere in what we're walking through. God, you are with us and we will not be afraid. We know that you are with us and we know that you are our helper. 
Your scripture even says, do not fear for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God and I will strengthen you and help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God, help us to remember that when we're afraid. And I just pray that um, as this time continues and hopefully we can be together again soon, God, I pray that you would help us to stay focused on the mission of reaching people in this city for you. God, there are so many people in this city who need you, and there are so many people who are hopeless. There are so many people who feel lost. And God, I pray that you would use us as the Big C Church to reach these people, that we could stay focused on the mission. God, I pray that you would remind us that we are your handiwork and we are created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which you prepared in advance for us to do. God, you've created us to share the gospel. Help us not to forget that even in a time where we may feel isolated, God, that we would continue to work towards the mission of sharing the gospel because we are created in your image and this is the exact thing that you have asked us to do. Help us to stay focused on that so that this city can be changed for the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. God, I pray that in this uncertain time, we would be able to hold on to the things that we know that are true, God, that we could hold on to our faith that says that you sent your son here to die for us, to save us from our sins, so we can be with you for eternity. God, I pray for those that are lost in this season right now. God, and I pray that as they're searching for these answers, that they are seeking out these answers to these questions that they have, God, that they would find you, that you would be their answer. That when they seek, that you would find them, God. That you would meet them where they're at and that the lost would become found. God, we trust that you have a good plan for this. God, you said that you work out all things for the good of those who love you. And we trust that you have purpose in this season. God, amidst, among this season, I pray that you would bring comfort. Comfort to the workers that are still out there working right now. God, give them strength and courage to keep going, to not fear this disease, God, that you would bring comfort to those that are sick and those that are hurting, God, those that are lonely. Just bring your comfort right now. God, we trust you in this season. We thank you for all that you've already done. In your name, amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you that you have given us a reason to search you out. And Lord, we pray that for this coronavirus that's going around, Lord, that it'll stop in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that we will see things happen in our midst, that we'll see a great increase of people, a mighty revival, that the unsaved will come to know you as Lord and Savior of their lives, and we thank you for it. And Lord, that this church will be stronger than ever before, and we praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Dear God, I pray for the COVID-19 pandemic. God, I know that the whole situation is um, in your hands and I know you have control over it. God, I just pray that you would give us hope. And I pray for all of the people who are going through pain and who are struggling because of it. God, I pray for healing for them because I believe in your miraculous powers, God. God, I pray for all of the people who have lost loved ones because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I just pray that you would give them strength to go through their struggles because of it. And God, I just pray for peace for all of the families who have lost someone because of it. God, I pray for Easter weekend as we're home with our families. Just help us to remember why we celebrate Easter and how much we love you. Amen. Lord, our land is in need of healing, Father. Today, as the body of Christ, we declare Chronicles 714. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land. Father, we just speak that over this, over America, over this region. And Father, we just ask, Lord, that this, this scourge called COVID-19 would cease in Jesus' name, Father. And we call COVID-19 for his true name, Christ over viruses, infections, and diseases. 
And Father, for the saints who are shut in their homes, who are in shelter in place situations, we pray, Father, that they will have um, a time where they can seek you, that they will have personal revival from the time they spent with you, Father. And the collective efforts from all the saints across the globe will stir a great awakening to America and the globe. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, thanks again uh, for those of you leading us in prayer. We appreciate it. And uh, here's how we want to close. I want our our thoughts and our hearts looking towards Sunday, right? As we get ready to, to leave because we know the end of the story. And this is what makes the cross. You can't, you can't take the cross and the empty grave and you can't separate them. They work hand in hand. And so this last song that we sing, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. It might be an older song for some of you, but the, it is so meaningful and so appropriate in this moment. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. For I know, right? For I know He holds the future. And what an appropriate song for us to sing as we look towards Sunday. We look towards the Resurrection Sunday and the power of the empty grave. Tali, lead us in this song. trust in you, we put our hope in you, we put our faith in you. Because you live, we know life is worth it. Life is worth the living because the, you rose from the dead, you came back. And Lord, as we fix our eyes and our hearts towards Easter Sunday, God, I pray that you would do a life transformation in each and every one of our lives. Lord, we pray for those that are sick, that they would experience healing because of the blood of Jesus, because of the work you did on the cross. For those that are lost, God, I pray that they would find the truth of Jesus Christ, that they would discover the freedom that there is by putting their faith and hope in you. And God, I pray that even though we physically can't gather, Lord, I pray the excitement and the energy and the momentum that Easter brings would take place in each and every one of our hearts. We love you, we worship you, and we com we commit our lives to you. The King of kings, the Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, hope this time has been a blessing and an encouragement and inspiration to you. We're encouraging you to continue to pray each day, 7.14 in the morning and in the evening. Please share the good news this week. Uh, this weekend to your friends and family and, and spread the, the service times to those uh, around you. 
We'll be on Facebook, on YouTube, and on The CW at 10 a.m. on Sunday, 11 a.m. on Fox, and our kids' services at 9 and 11.15. We'll see you Sunday morning. God bless.